Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1057. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about 40 real estate markets that are poised to decline. Now, I'm not spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about real estate. Real estate has been holding up better than almost anything, but we do know there are signs of slowing. And because interest rates were increased so much so quickly, well, we did see prices start to decline a little bit. We saw multiple offers get reduced to few offers. And in some cases, we saw people stop making offers altogether. But recently, we saw a report that said that more inventory had recently come on the market in Los Angeles. And that was a very interesting change because one of the problems that we have with this real estate market is we have no inventory and a lot of demand. So we have a mismatch between the homes that are available and how many people want to buy. One of the things that keeps consumer confidence up is when the price of their home is up. When housing prices and home equity is rising, people feel richer, and that helps them to have more confidence to spend. But when housing markets get weak, just the opposite happens. And we're not seeing a lot of weakness yet, but we are seeing some changes in trends. And there are specifically 40 real estate markets that this article talked about and some research that was done that I really thought was important for you to hear. Because they're saying in this Fortune article that there are 40 housing markets at risk of a 15 to 20 percent home price decline. And it says every quarter, Moody's Analytics assesses whether local fundamentals, including local income levels, can support local home prices. At the latest reading, Moody's Analytics finds 183 of the nation's 413 largest regional housing markets are overvalued by more than 25%. In some of those overvalued markets, buyers and sellers can expect to watch home prices fall by 5 to 10% amid this housing correction. Those 5 to 10% home price declines could quickly worsen if cooling in rate sensitive sectors like real estate ultimately pushes the U.S. economy into recession. If a recession hits, Moody's Analytics chief economist Mark Zandi tells Fortune he expects national home prices to decline by about 5%. However, in America's most overvalued housing markets, Zandi predicts a 15 to 20% home price decline. Zandi's national outlook is that the Federal Reserve's inflation fighting plan has pushed some markets into the early innings of a price decline. Now, just because he's saying that doesn't mean that all markets are the same. Markets are vastly different across the country. Some are much stronger than others. Earlier this month, Fortune published a list of the 40 regional housing markets that are likely to see a 15% to 20% home price decline amid a recession. At the top of the list are Boise, Idaho, Colorado Springs, Colorado, Las Vegas, Nevada, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Tampa, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Fort Collins, Colorado, Sherman, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida, and Idaho Falls, Idaho. Of the 40 overvalued housing markets most at risk of a decline, 33% are overvalued by a higher degree now than in 2006. Among those 40 regional housing markets, the average was overvalued by 45% as of the first quarter of 2022. Among the same markets, the average was overvalued by 19% in the first quarter of 2006. But just because a market like Boise is overvalued by 72% doesn't mean home prices there will fall by 72%. It's historically normal for a growth market to see home prices, statistically speaking, 
trading higher than local incomes would normally support. However, once a market gets too overvalued, a price correction often becomes warranted. That's where Zandi says things now stand in those 40 significantly overvalued housing markets. The report goes on to say the vast majority of these at-risk markets are concentrated in fast-growing areas of the Mountain West and Sun Belt that benefited the most from the pandemic's work-from-home boom. Renters in high-cost cities like Seattle and Boston simply couldn't pass up the affordability of markets like Austin and Tampa. The ensuing pandemic housing boom saw markets like Austin and Tampa become overvalued by 61% and 45% respectively. In places like Austin, which was overvalued by just 7% in the first quarter of 2006, this feels very new. In other places, it looks eerily similar to 2006. Look no farther than Las Vegas and Phoenix, which Moody's Analytics rates as being overvalued by 53% and 54% in the first quarter of 2006. Now, Phoenix and Las Vegas are overvalued by 51% and 54%. While the pandemic housing boom has taken some regional housing markets to historically unaffordable levels, we shouldn't anticipate a 2008-style crash. That bust was underpinned by a credit boom of subprime mortgages. As the market and economy slowed, those bad mortgages began to go belly up. Ultimately, it set off a foreclosure crisis that lingered well past 2010. This time around, Zandi says we don't need to worry about bad loans. The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, passed in 2010, outlawed those shady mortgages. The pandemic housing boom, in his mind, wasn't a credit-fueled boom. Instead, it was a mismatch between elevated demand, an influx of work-from-home, investor, and millennial buyers, and low inventory levels. When inventory levels in 2021 sank to a 40-year low, Zandi says homebuyers had little choice but to bid up prices. Already, we're starting to see many of these significantly overvalued housing markets slow. That ongoing slowdown is particularly swift in Western markets like Boise, Denver, and Phoenix. Ali Wolf, chief economist at Zonda, said many markets in the West are landlocked for one reason or another, whether the ocean, mountains, national parks, or growth boundaries. As a result, building is more limited in these markets compared to parts of the country with less regulation and more developable land. The strong demand over the past two years drove up home prices across the country, and it appears the West hit the pricing ceiling quicker than the other markets, giving the particular supply constraints. She said, I don't think the market will face a great financial crisis like bust, given the different dynamics today around mortgage lending standards and strong builder balance sheets. We can't ignore, however, that the market is already correcting. Higher home prices and higher mortgage rates rose to the point that demand seized up in many parts of the country. Home prices are already adjusting down, and we could see that continue until consumer confidence and affordability resets. And that's the end of that article. So lots of good information in there. If you're buying, be cautious. This is probably a time when you're overpaying, so be aware of that. And have a long-term outlook. Plan to stay in the house for 20 years or more, because these prices probably will correct sharply in a year or two. If you're selling, realize this is probably a very opportunistic time, but it could change at any given moment. If interest rates continue to rise drastically, that could change the market equilibrium. If a lot of supply comes on the market at once because investor psychology has changed and now more people want to sell all of a sudden, these things can shift markets quickly. But on the other hand, should we see some recessionary pressures come in, we could see a stop or even a reversal of some of the Fed interest rate hiking. And we're already starting to see that in the bond market where interest rates are starting to trend back down, which is telling us they're foreseeing that the Fed may be done or close to done with raising interest rates because we are seeing inflation abating in oil and in other commodities, lumber, copper, and some other commodities. So peak inflation may be behind us. We're waiting to get more data, but we're getting some price points right now that looks like we could have peak inflation in the rearview mirror. And if that's the case, interest rates could be getting a little bit better, and that's what the bond market is telling us right now, because it is trending lower. 
And that's good for home buyers and good for the housing market. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when new podcasts become available and you'll never miss one of them. And all of my podcasts are available on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.